Hello and welcome to the devotion for Tuesday, January the 31st, entitled, A Plan, Not a Path. Now, Sunday morning, as we were answering questions, one of the things that I talked about was this concept of God having a plan for our life, but not a path for our life. And the difference is a path is a defined trail. It starts here, it goes to this checkpoint and this checkpoint and this checkpoint, kind of moves along. A plan is very different than a path. A plan is a purpose, a direction, a list or a set of values that we are going to have that are guideposts, compasses, as you will. And I explained it's more like flying an airplane where there are no roads, there are no boundaries, that it's about using tools to lead us to a destination that correct for the adverse weather, that correct for a wind uh, shear, that correct for barometric pressure, that correct for even magnetic north variations. All of those different aspects come into understanding how do we get from here to that destination. As we begin to look at God's plan for mankind, as we look at God's plan for our individual lives, it is to grow us into the image of his son, Jesus Christ. He said he has predestined that we be conformed into the likeness of his son. So as we think about being conformed in the likeness of his son, that's not a, a, a checkpointed path. That's a purpose. That's a direction. He said that he wants us to begin to take on his character traits, to take on his values, to be made into that image. Now, as we look at Israel, in the Old Testament, we realized that they were all over the map. When it came down to following a path, they were a wreck, but God continued to use them for his plan. In fact, as we read in Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. They are plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. This is God's plan for Israel. But Israel wandered all over. They were constantly uh, falling away from God's principles, wandering, even running at times from the presence of God. One of the uh, very, very powerful uh, illustrations of God's having a plan and not a path is when Israel cried out for a king. They said, we want to be like all the other nations on the face of the earth with a king to lead us. And Samuel, who was the priest at that time, uh, went to God and said, they're crying out for a king. What do I do? And God said, well, go and tell them what it's going to be like to have a king. He's going to put your children into the army. He's going to take your daughters as his wives. He is going to take your money in tribute to him. He's going to build big palaces and castles for himself while you stay destitute. This is what a king is going to do. You don't want a king. And yet they cried out, we want a king. Now that was not God's plan for them. That was not a place that he wanted to have to work with. But because their heart was there, he gave them a king and said, okay, the plan can now be adjusted to deal with a monarchy as opposed to only a priest or a judge to lead Israel, which, is, which had been the pattern up until that point. God's plan was not perverted by that. It wasn't his best will. It wasn't his desire for them. He thought it was a bad idea, a poor choice, but he could still make his plan for Israel come together even through a monarchy. The people would suffer, but his plan could still be made known. In the same way, uh, in Second. Uh, uh, Chronicles 7.14, it says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, will forgive their sins and heal their lands. Over and over, he goes, if my people will just call on my name, even if they wandered afar away off, even if they are uh, uh, at times far from anything that even looks like the presence of God. He goes, if they will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way, I will heal them. I will forgive their sin and I will return them and heal their land. God's plan is to bring us back even when we wander. And yet when we wander, we have problems. In Romans 6, 21, it says, what benefit did you reap at the time from the things that you are now ashamed of? Those things resulted in death. But now that you have been set free from sin and have become slaves to God, what benefit are you reaping? A life that leads to holiness. And the result is an eternal life. 
For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. In the same way, Galatians 6, 8 says, those who sow to please their sinful nature from that nature will reap destruction. But the one who sows to please the Spirit from the Spirit will reap life. So over and over in Scripture, we have uh, God revealing His heart, His plan. In Israel, it was to reveal the Messiah, to show God to the world. In the Christian church, now that Christ has come, the Messiah has done His work, it is to conform us into the image of Christ, that we become ambassadors, that we, with the Spirit of God, bring what is called the gospel, the good news. Now, in a quest to be conformed into the image of God, every single one of us have to look for God's principles to guide our life. We have to understand that that plan can be perverted, that we can sin, that sin brings destruction, that that moves us much like Israel from being in a place where we just have a priest that takes us to God to having to deal with a king and going that route. God can still make his plan work, but we have to walk a harder ground. In the same way, sin has consequences. Those ripples can roll for even generations, and yet, God says it does not pervert my plan. And yet, the greatest thing that we can ever do is stay on track. Let that compass of God's word guide us. Let the principles that Christ told us make the difference in our life. We don't have to wander. We don't have to shipwreck our life. We don't have to be redeemed again and again and again. We can actually follow. We can know that plan to be conformed in the image of God's Son and let Him do that work. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we know the plans that, that you had for Israel and the plans that you have for us are to prosper us and not to hurt us. That as you conform us into the image of your Son, Lord, every single one of us will struggle because we have uh, a fallen nature, because we live in an adverse world, because the enemy does attack. All of these things play into the mix. But Lord, you said that if we would have our heart truly attuned to you, if our understanding is we are being conformed in the image of your son and those principles continue to guide and empower us, we don't have to shipwreck our lives. We can walk with you. God, empower us to that end. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, God has a plan for your life. And the path to that plan starts right where you are. And if we know that purpose, that plan, to be conformed in the image of his son, if we have the truth of God's word as our compass, we don't have to wander and end up in the bush and in the ditch and every other uh, difficult place that will cause the trail to get more uh, treacherous. But we actually can walk with God. He said that he would order the steps of a righteous man or woman. He'd be a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Let's follow. And I'll see you tomorrow.